Station, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Houston, this is a station. Base Station, we're ready for the event. KNX Radio, this is Mission Control, Houston. Please call Station for a voice check. Station, this is KNX Radio. How do you hear me? KNX Radio, loud and clear. Great to be with you today. Welcome aboard. Thank you so much. Happy to hear from you. This is pretty cool. Uh, Chris, thanks for, thanks for the time. This is great. So uh, let me ask you something, because you uh, got up there just as this horrible pandemic was uh, reaching all over the earth, uh, and you're safe now up there, but I'm wondering, we're wondering what your thoughts are, because down here it's getting kind of freaky. Yeah, it's been quite interesting to watch from uh, 250, 60 miles abo above the Earth. I left Houston at the, the very last week in February, and that's right when uh, it was starting to build momentum, as, as, as re we recall. And, uh, and I, we basically immediately went into a quarantine in, in uh, Russia prior to launch, and that was a little early, earlier than our planned normal quarantine. So... The whole time that it's spread across the globe, we've been sort of isolated from it and just getting our information from friends, family, and the news. And uh, I, too, like many folks, was, was had some degree of, of uh, excitement for the possibility of, of things opening up and people getting out and about. And uh, and it seems like now that um, that as that happens, we're, we're learning that maybe... People need to use a little more caution, and it's not going to be an immediate light switch to go back to what everyone knows as normal. And, and from my personal perspective, I'm hoping uh, or very curious what it'll be like in October when I, when my, when I return to Earth. And, and I'm quite mentally prepared now for some completely different uh, set of uh, parameters that we define as normal. It's really quite fascinating to watch from up here. Yeah, how often do you talk to your friends and family that, that you worry about, and then do you feel like you're a part of it, or do you just feel completely detached from it? Well, we have great communication structure up here. We, we have email and have the ability to, to make a phone call to friends and family, and, and once a week we have a video conference with our, uh, with our family and loved ones. And so we stay pretty well connected. We also have daily news recorded and sent up to us that we can watch uh, on board here on our local network. And so we, we're pretty well aware of what's, what's going on. Uh, both from our friends and family and, and from the news. I, so I don't feel completely disconnected, even though I'm here in space, and, and I, I think I speak for all of us, uh, that we, we um, you associate with people, you associate your, with people that you love. And when people that you love have happiness or people that you love have pain, that is translated to you as well, and and and, and it's kind of a similar when feeling when we're f watching friends and family uh, go through what the world is going through right now. So I do not feel t detached from it. No. You know, uh, you know, talking about pain. Of course, we also down here in the states have suffered through a lot of of uh, emotional and physical pain the past few weeks with a lot of unrest and I'm, and I'm wondering uh, from your perspective again uh, up there uh, looking down at the earth uh, you must have a different sense of things a different perspective than we do when we're down here I would think well yes and no um, we still have the perspective of being a human being with our personal belief structure and how that fits into the information that you're getting and, and you process it all. And that doesn't change with us being uh, on the space station or on the ground. What, what the being up here does uh, allow us to do is open the window. Well, the window shade. If we open the window, we'd have bigger problems without a space suit on. But open the window shade. Yeah. Open the window shade and um, and look at the planet go by. It's going by at five miles a second, and, and so it, it only takes a handful of minutes to go across the entire continent of, of North America, and and in that short period of time, you because you've been an adult and have traveled maybe from New York City to Los Angeles, and you know that it's a big country. 
but yet we go past it very quickly. And it just makes you realize that um, we're all pretty small. It, each and every one of us is little, but collectively we can, we can combine our efforts and if everybody does, pitches in and does their job and does what, uh, does right for the world, does right for the environment, does right for their neighbors and friends, uh, we can make a big difference as a collective group. And that's the perspective I have when I look down at the earth going by so quickly. You said October for when you come back. When you do get back, besides seeing your family, which is the obvious, right, what's the first thing that's on the list to go and do? Well, the very first thing, and I've done it on uh, my two previous space flights, is um, after landing in Houston and, and seeing friends, my family right away, we drive to the Johnson Space Center, and I'm going to walk onto the basketball court and shoot a free throw. I'm two for two, nothing but net on the previous two flights. So uh, that will be action number one, and we'll see how it goes. <laughs> so, so what exactly are you folks doing up there? Uh, I mean, I know you're up there for a reason, but, but what exactly <laughs> are you doing? And are you staying six feet apart and wearing masks? <laughs> No, we're not staying six feet apart and wearing masks. It's, it's too uh, too cramped. Although it, the, the space station is small in one sense, it's big in another. Uh, we have uh, ha the ha one half is, is largely the Russian section and one half is the American and other international partners. And uh, our, our two Russian colleagues, Anatoly and Ivan, uh, they're busy during the day and, and we can go several a meal uh, between meals without bumping into each other so so it's big in that sense but in the in the hallways kind of where i am we're always passing each other and it's not practical to to always stay six feet apart you'd have to hug hug the wall on either side but back to your the first part of your question is what are we doing up here our mission is largely science and research this is a national national laboratory and uh and that's what we're striving to do every single day is maximize the potential of all the cool um, experiments and cool facilities that we have, and there's more cool things than there are hands of astronauts to to manipulate them. So there, there's a schedule that gets pushed to us, and each day we're we're working hard to accomplish that. Now it is this gigantic mechan mechanical system, just like your car or your house, and it requires wrenches to be turned and filters to be changed and broken things to be swapped out. And so we have a fair amount of of that to do as well. So. It's this balancing act of keeping the system maintained so that it can do the research and then and conduct, conducting all, all of that research. Has the food gotten better? What are you eating? Man, the food is really good these days. When I first flew in 2009, the food was okay, but I, I have to give a big kudos to the food team uh, of all the partner uh, space programs. There's plenty of good stuff. I, I have chicken fajitas in the oven right now. That'll be my dinner. I had salmon with vegetables for lunch and uh, um, different candies. I had granola and trail mix uh, this morning and then as a midday snack. I like hot chocolate a lot, so I've got a, a bag of hot chocolate in the, in the heater as well. So there's a great variety of food, and we're certainly not for lack of any yummy stuff up here. You know, the, the chicken sounds particularly good, so as you're passing over L.A., if you don't mind, just, like, drop something down. How about the mic? <laughs> <laughs> we'll catch it. Chris, we know you got to run or uh, float on by. Thanks so much for this. Thank you. A real pleasure being with you today. All the best to you guys. Station. This is Houston ACR. That concludes the KNX radio portion of the event. Please stand by for while we reconfigure for the deferred release messages. Thank <laughs> you.